Hey guys, it's Aman and Christina from the Our Rich Journey podcast, where we answer your questions about making, saving, and investing money for financial independence and retiring early. Today, Christina, we have one of your favorite questions you <laughs> love to answer, and it is about dividend income. In fact, this person wants to know what is the best ETF for dividends? Yeah, well, I love this question because we get to use our real life example. And I know that what we invest in doesn't necessarily make sense for other people. Just because we invest in it doesn't mean that someone else has to invest it or that they should invest in it. But I like being able to share what we invest in and the reasoning behind our investments because even if someone decides not to invest in what we invest in, which is completely normal, they understand the reasoning so that when they're developing their portfolio, they can think about their own reasoning and apply what we're talking about as we break things down with investments into their portfolio. So I think even more important than the specific things that we invest in, the reasoning behind that is really important. Another thing that I'm really excited about today is I feel like you've nailed the intro now. Oh, you, you know, the so. intro, you're like, we, we answer questions about making, saving, and investing money on your financial independence journey. Now, the outro, is that a word? Outro? I need to refine a oh, bit. Oh, no, you're but... good. You are a podcaster with a great deal of experience at this point. <laughs> this is our, I don't know, seventh or eighth right, podcast. Right, we're, we're certainly experienced right, right after eight. Is that I mean, how it works? We sound great. I've, I've listened to the podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Christina. When you listen to podcasts, do you listen to them at normal speed or do you speed them up? I always speed them up. Wait, so there are people <laughs> listening to this podcast right now and they have probably sped us up. Yes. So if you're listening to us right now and you think that we're talking fast, we're talking even faster now. No. I <laughs> what happens to me is I will listen to them faster uh -huh. and then if I need to listen to something a little bit slower, I'll go back to normal pace and I'm like, man, this person speaks really <laughs> slowly. <laughs> But I think, you know, at an uh, at a 1.2, 1 1.5 1 yes. pace, you can really get through a lot of information. Yeah, I think the people that are listening to podcasts at twice the speed, they're not soaking it in. <laughs> they're going to miss the points. In fact, I think you should actually listen to our podcast extra slow. Oh, no. So that you can... So, <laughs> so that you can... Absorb all of the information. Let it marinate every single word piercing through your ears, oh down into your soul. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Before we get too crazy, right. let's answer this question. I mean, you know, we like to have a little bit of fun. This is investing. It doesn't have to be boring. You are right. You're right. right. So right. let's listen to Maria's question on ETFs that play, pay good dividends, and then we'll get to the answer. This is Maria from Puerto Rico. The full question is, what is the best ETF with uh, best dividends uh, taking into consideration uh, performance and fees? Thank you. Ooh. I love that she... She's, I, she's straight to the point. Yes, because I think it's like, okay, when you're thinking about investments, you want to think about what type of performance you anticipate, and you also want to think about fees. I love that she hits on both of those. Now, in terms of performance, past performance doesn't necessarily dictate future performance. I mean, it does not dictate future mm -hmm. performance. So that's something to keep in mind. But you can look at the past performance and see how it's been doing to get an understanding of what you anticipate it could potentially do. Well, that's what we do with a lot of our investments. We look at the historical returns in order to calculate kind of what we project our returns will be especially when we were pursuing fire and we were trying to reach a certain threshold of income within our portfolio, we definitely use those historical returns to kind of identify where that investment was going to go. You know, this question about what is the best based off of fees and performance, I still think that it's very subjective mm -hmm. because, I mean, to me, that's a loaded question. What's the best? Now, the best for you may not be the best for me or the best for them may not be the best for us. You know what I mean though, right? This term, the best, it's not as clear cut because I think people will see investments differently based off of their own situation. So I just put that out there as a caveat. 
we have our favorite. Maybe that's what we should say. Mm -hmm. We're not going to call these the best because, like I said, it's very subjective. We're going to talk about our favorite. And we have several ETFs that we like for dividend income because they fit within our portfolio a certain way. And you guys have heard us talk about these before, especially if you've been watching our YouTube videos, if you are enrolled in any of our courses, if you are on our 365 Days to Fire program, you've definitely heard us dive deep into these. But immediately what comes to mind is VYM. So VYM is an exchange traded fund that invests in large cap companies that pay an above average dividend. And we like it because it invests in companies that are very, very stable and established companies. Companies that have consistently paid out a dividend every single year. It also has a very low expense ratio. Yes, I love that you point out the expense ratio because again, that's something that Maria was thinking about. That's something that you need to think about when you're investing. The expense ratio for VYM is 0.06% and its dividend is about 3.3%, which is really good for an ETF that invests in these types of high yield dividend investment companies. So let's also focus on performance. now. What I like to think about when I'm looking at performance is long-term performance because over the short term, the stock market can be very volatile. So you may see something that's really high up over the short term, a really high performance, or it can be really low in terms of performance, but that's not really indicative of how that stock may potentially perform over the long term. So we like to look at around a 10 year performance rate. So VYM over the past 10 years has averaged about 10% as an annual return on this type of investment. And I think, again, that's something you wanna look at to give you an idea of how it could potentially perform in the future. It's not a guaranteed performance in the future, but when you're looking at a longer period of time, especially because right now the stock market is so volatile, it's really important to look at past performance over a long period of time. And I mean, BYM is one of those ETFs. It invests in companies that are stable, that are established. And so it makes it kind of a safe and secure investment. It's also an ETF that is comprised of over 400 of these companies. So that's something else that we really like about it. Now you can, of course, invest in other ETFs that will pay you a higher dividend, but there may be a lot more volatility and a lot more risk. Yes. One of the things that you said is you can invest in other ETFs. I like that Maria is thinking about ETFs or index funds and not necessarily individual stocks. Now we've talked about the difference of investing in individual stocks and investing in things that have a broader amount of investments in them, like an ETF or an index fund. So the idea that she's looking at these ETFs and potentially index funds, I think that that provides for more diversification of her investment and it provides for less risk with her money as well. Okay. Now, I also want to talk about a couple of other high yielding ETFs that we like as well. This is just homework from Rhea to go and look at. Of course, this is not investment advice, but we also like VNQ. That is a REIT ETF. Now, REIT ETFs, they pay potentially a higher dividend than a VYM. I'm not sure what VNQ is paying at this point right now, but I think it's somewhere above 3%. So any REIT ETF is going to pay you a high dividend. At least they should be because those dividends are based off of the profits that those companies that are in that ETF are making. The other high yielding dividend ETFs that we like are utility ETFs. So VPU, that's another Vanguard. ETF and it is invested in utility companies mainly. So the choices when it comes to investing in ETFs that pay you a high dividend, you can get very creative with this group of investments because you can go by sector and look for high dividends. I mean, there are medical ETFs that pay a high dividend, but BYM, it's comprised of many industries. There's medical, there's energy, there's even some technology in BYM for these older, more established technology companies that do pay a high dividend. Really, it comes down to whatever you buy, how it fits in your overall investment portfolio. And whenever we buy an ETF, we've talked about this on other shows, we try to buy ETFs 
that complement our core investment. We like to invest in a total stock market index fund and anything else that we invest outside of that, we are looking for it to complement that core investment. So it's great that Maria is looking at high dividend yielding ETFs, but she must always be asking the question, how does this investment fit within my overall investment plan? How does it support me and my goals moving towards whatever financial goal she's established? Yeah, one of the things I think is so great about dividends is that you can have recurring income coming in from the dividends. And if you are on your FIRE journey, you can actually reinvest those dividends to allow for compound interest and to grow your money even faster. But one thing I would mention about selecting investments that you want to have that dividend income generating, you have to be careful not to select an investment just because of the potential dividend yield. Because a company could stop paying its dividend. It could significantly decrease the dividend yield that it pays out to its investors, to its shareholders. And so it's really important that beyond just looking at the dividend, you really understand what the investment is. What is it investing in? If it's an ETF, it's an, if it's an index fund, if it's an, an individual stock, you need to be comfortable with the investment itself and not necessarily the dividend because that investment, if it goes bankrupt or if it goes bad or if it stops paying its dividend and that's the only reason why you invested in it, then your investment is totally shattered because of that. That's a really good point. That is a really good point that I just I want to emphasize because some companies, people invest in solely because of the dividend. And if that company should do something different with that dividend, if they should cut the dividend, but you know, reduce how much they're paying out, those companies, the value of that stock will also drop. So you will lose the dividend and you will also lose the capital that you have in that stock. And I'll give you some examples of companies that when you look at them from a overall standpoint, when you look at their finances, they don't have very strong finances, even though they're paying out really good dividends. I mean, you look at a lot of like telecommunication companies, they don't have necessarily the strongest finances. I mean, they have a lot of debt and they're not making a tremendous amount of profit, but yet they're still paying out dividends. And in many cases, they're paying out dividends because they recognize that if they cut those dividends, the stock will plummet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are lots of companies that are like this on the exchange that are paying out dividends when in reality, they don't have the financial health in order to do that. Mm -hmm. So whatever investment you make, if you are focused too much on that dividend, you may be overlooking a lot of the financials that you should also be looking at. I agree, I agree. So hopefully that gave you some things to think about, Maria. Again, just because we invest in it doesn't necessarily mean that you should be investing in it, but that reasoning behind it, understanding that you're not supposed to be chasing the dividend. You have to understand the actual investment. You're looking at the performance. How has the 10 year performance been? You're looking at what is the day dividend payout? Historically, have they consistently been paying out or have they cut dividends in the past? Have they reduced it significantly? And you're looking at expense ratios. So there's so many different things to think about. Hopefully we gave you some ideas to go out and research, and then maybe it will give you some more ideas of things that you could potentially put into your portfolio to get that dividend income coming in. So thank you so much, Maria, for your question. For anyone else that's out there that has a question for us, please send them in to us. You can go to ourichjourney.com forward slash podcast to submit a question for us to be played in a future episode. And until then, thank you so much for checking in with us today. Please leave us a review and we will see you in the next episode. Remember that we are not financial advisors and the views expressed by us are solely for entertainment purposes. You must make responsible decisions and that means making decisions based on the thorough independent research that you conduct. Thanks for listening.